Trent got three. Now here's second and seven. Our first down of the scoreboard here this afternoon. After a fairly uneventful first quarter, that last play, that'll make a few highlight clips. It certainly will, and you're exactly right. The first quarter, almost... Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This is fielded at the chalk of the 10. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. At the line, prepping for their next drive, the Bears offense. It hasn't gone particularly well for them, that's obvious. In these conditions, no points so far. They've got to get that offense on track. The question, how do they do it? It is the age-old question, isn't it? And to me... Finding a way to make sure your playmakers touch the ball without it being too exotic. Meaning you don't have to go deep down the field. Maybe you hit them on those short passes on the perimeter. Make sure you just turn around and hand it to your best runner and get out of the way. Don't cause any extra stress on your offense. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. On second down, this is Harris. After a gain of five, they'll wind up being about a length of the football short here on third down. I think you mentioned in the opening drive that these guys needed to establish the run, protect the young QB. I actually wrote that down, believe it or not. So how would you assess things so far? I'm kind of touched that you actually wrote something like that down. I appreciate that, partner. But I do think they've been able to do that. Maybe not as effectively as they've wanted to. But I think we'll see more of as this game goes along because they want to continue to take care of that young QB. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. Officially a gain of just a yard there, but they do convert on third and inches. He'll drop to throw. He's going to launch this thing way downfield. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. I tell you, Brandon, this defense is playing with some confidence. Haven't allowed a point yet. Flying to the football. I'm telling you, it's almost 11 to the ball on every snap. Another nice job there to force an incompletion. Here now is second and 10, again from the 41. Check it back. They'll try the right side with Harris. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll set up a third down. And that's one of the reasons you like to blitz even on rundowns. It confuses the blocking assignments. It doesn't allow those offensive linemen to get up to the second level. The Bears on third down. Just one for three thus far. This will be third and five. The open man is Smith. And they're going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Panthers 37. A lot of tight ends just use their size and their strength, try to occupy some space and kind of body people away and catch the football. But not this guy. He's a refined route runner. Makes me wonder if he took some dance classes in his background with his footwork. A pretty good looking run there on first down. That'll go for nine yards, just short of the line to gain. A nice run there, nine yards, and it'll be second down. Brings up second and one at the 28 yard line. The last run got nine. That leaves him with second and a yard. He's not gonna get me. Second. 
That one, a first down pickup of eight. I like watching the wide receiver screen because it's a real teamwork play. Because guess what? The guy catching the ball, he'll get all the credit. But how about the people up to block in front of him, either fellow receivers or offensive linemen? That makes that play a really nice timing play, and sometimes it can break big. A first trip to the red zone for the Bears. First and 10 right at the 20. Now a give right side. Harris. That good for 19 and a first down. Boy, he does it at a high level, doesn't he? Because when I watch him, I think of his vision. Straight ahead, peripheral. Also has that sense of where holes are going to be before they actually open. I think that helps set him apart from many of the other backs in the league. They'll run it with Johnson. And he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Bears. Carry on Johnson. His third touchdown now on the year. As they are now on the board here in the first half. And it's no good. He misses the extra point, And this remains a 7-6 game. So with the missed PAT in his rearview mirror, he goes back out to kick this one off. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And all that worked, but he stopped where he ultimately would have been, and he simply taken a knee, and that's the 25-yard line. The Panthers out there and ready to begin their next drive. And thus far, the weather has not slowed this offense down one bit. They've looked good so far in the first half. They certainly have. And think back to our meeting with the head coach. And we asked him because we saw the forecast for this game, didn't we? We said, hey, have you prepared for this? And he talked about the different drills that they've done in adverse conditions, the wet ball drills, things of that nature. He said, I don't think it's going to slow us down much. We tend to handle it pretty well. And he's been right. A three-yard loss to start the drive. They'll look to make that up and then some on second and 13. Second and 13. Looking left side and he's got a man. That's Grant. And he'll go down just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. One of the things you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. On third down, Parks. And that is incomplete. Certainly looked like they were getting ready to convert there on third down, but what an effort to get his hand on that one, knock it away and brings up a fourth down decision. Here's J.K. Scott now, as he'll kick it away for the second time. One fifty-eight left to play till we hit halftime. Coming up at halftime, we remind you once again that we're going to check in with Jonathan Coachman in Orlando. He'll have stats and scores from around the NFL as we reach now, hard to believe, the halfway point of the season. Time flying. It certainly is. Time to get the sweaters out, my man. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Well, we saw him there trying to get it to the outside, trying to get to the perimeter, but not a whole lot of room there. But there's got to be one positive to that. If you keep moving laterally, Creases tend to develop as the game moves on, and they can run it back inside later. Second and nine now. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. 18 yards on that one, and Chicago has the first. So from the 36 now, first and 10. They'll look to throw. 
Oh, it's a screen pass. That's complete. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. A gain there of 12 yards and a first down for the Bears. When you run a screen pass really well, you got to like the look of it because so many parts come together to make it work well. The offensive linemen where they're faking people out, the back slipping out there, catching the football, then all of them going together as one unit downfield, a really nice pickup. A good run, got seven on first. Here's second and three. Now a give right side. It's Harris, and I think the ball's out. And this is going to kick out of bounds. Boy, a fortunate bouncer, too, there. They'll keep possession back inside the 10-yard line. I don't know about you, but I could hear and feel the sigh of relief all the way up here in our booth. That was palpable. The sideline, the friend there. No doubt about it. Ball goes over the sideline, able to retain possession, no turnover. <laughs> I know his coaches are screaming, just hang on to the ball, man. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And he maneuvers his way down to the three-yard line. Now the Bears going to use the second of their timeouts as they stop it with 11 seconds remaining in this first half. So the ball position now at the three. Here's second and goal. And they will stop him after a fairly minimal pickup. Now a timeout. Seven seconds left in the first half. Timeouts, remember, so this is going to have to be a delay. And that'll set them back five. How crucial will those five yards be? We'll see as they come up again here, third and goal. This is going to be intercepted. Picked up by Jamal Agnew. Accelerating and off he goes. And he will bring this one back. It's a pick six. Brandon, we spent time with this team before the game, and there was never any indication that they did not like their kicker. Well, it shows right now that they didn't like their kicker. Why didn't they just put it through the goalposts and take the lead? That is going to be the question that has to be answered. I don't know about you, but I'm skipping my flight. I'm going to the post-game press conference <laughs> to find out what they were thinking. Instead of playing conservative, they go through the air, and what a stunning turn of events. Forecast calling for more of the same. The rain set to continue as we are underway in the second half. That's fielded in the end zone. Gets past one man. And he will be brought down here at about the 17-yard line. The Panthers take over first and 10 at their own 17-yard line. This Carolina offense at the line, ready to go. They have the lead, now they'll be looking to extend that lead. And this is where I enjoy talking about one of my favorite subjects, tendency breakers, or counters as I also like to call them. You've done things in a certain way in the first half, and they've had ability to see what you've done. They're going to make their adjustments. So guess what? You adjust yourself and try and stay ahead of the pace because you are looking for some separation in this ball game. The adjustment to the adjustment. Without a doubt. <laughs> Show him one thing, hit him with something. And that's caught inside the 35. Touchdown, Carolina. 
John And the Panthers, they widen their lead. Still plenty of time left in the game, but now starting to pull away a little bit. Get some breathing room with that one. And I don't want people to think that NFL locker rooms are cookie cutter, that everyone's saying the exact same thing in every situation. But I do know that all 32 teams have an emphasis on starting fast. Game, being on the second half, no matter what, with his first five minutes, first three, whatever, this was a big score to start the second half. The Bears offense ready to go for their next drive. They trail offense first time to touch the ball in quarter three, and we'll see what they can do. And I can't wait to see what they have planned because some teams script to start a half. Other teams just go, okay, these are the sequence of plays we want to run. These things worked well for us. And sometimes they throw in that big chunk play right away. Shocker. Try and get after them early and try and create a big play to give themselves some momentum. See what they have up their sleeve. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. The tackle made by Nicholas Morrow. But that didn't appear to be a run blitz. He just started in once he saw the run develop. That appeared to be a case of see ball, get ball. They'll keep it on the ground. Harris again. And he loses the football a second time. And it's picked up by the Panthers. And he's free going down the left side. It's a foot race. And he will take it across for the Panthers' touchdown. We know this defense has some playmakers. We saw it right there. Well, really, we've seen it the whole game. Isn't it nice to see that on the opposite side? And oh, it'll be intercepted. Snags it for the pick. And a... So here's the kickoff now as he'll get it again following that fumble return for a score. This is fielded at the chalk of the 10. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. At the line, prepping for their next drive, the Bears offense. And they weren't on the sidelines for long, but I'll tell you what, I'm glad you and I weren't down there. We could hear <laughs> the coaches from all the way up here. They were adamant. You And that's caught inside the 30. And he takes this one in for a Bears touchdown. A big play there. 76 yards. And the Bears cut into that lead. Well, if they're going to make a game of this in the second half, they need a few big plays to go their way. That's one. And the way to get it done is to also conserve time. So to your point, that big play right there, now you're not moving the ball downfield, taking time off the clock. You're leaving yourself a better avenue to continue to try and make a comeback. And he will be brought down here at about the 17-yard line. The Panthers out there and ready to begin their next drive. They'll run with a former Tar Heel, T.J. Logan. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. Anytime you call an inside running play, you just know there should be a lot of congestion there. You're counting on your offensive line to take control of the line of scrimmage. That didn't happen in this case, and that play got bottled up. So the opening play of the drive goes backwards. Now they'll come up on second and 12. From the gun, Parks. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. Daniil Hunter make that now eight sacks for him on the season. All right, let's go ahead and detail this situation here. Third and long coming up, back near your own goal line. I would be very hesitant about throwing the football in this situation. Maybe just run, run up the middle? Yeah, I think that that might be the spot for them. you got to try and find some space for your punter because you don't want him backed up where he has to alter what he does. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. Here's J.K. Scott now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away.
Harris to return. Almost out kicked his coverage there. 48 yard punt, but 10 on the return. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. The Bears offense ready to go for their next drive. They'll try and start this drive in the air. A hit as he throws there, incomplete. Oh, that's got to frustrate him a little bit because it nearly got to him there, and it would have been the first sack of the game instead. They're able to influence the release, and they did force the incomplete pass. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Second and ten. He's going to loft one deep left side here. And that will be incomplete. Tried to dial up the long one way out there, but it'll be third down. They have not gotten him going at all. Tried to spark something there with a longer throw, unable to complete it. But you have to keep trying. He's one of their best playmakers. No matter what it says on the scoreboard, you're always trying to get him the football. On third down, he'll drop to throw. Able to find Harris, complete. And he is brought down, but not before reaching the 30. The 21 yards there as they convert on third. And the Bears first down. Out of the pistol, here's Johnson. All told, it's an even 30 and a first down. This is going to sound crazy, but that type of a carry, big time run, actually brings a high and a low to it. The high, of course, is the run. But the low, he didn't quite get to the end zone, just short of the pylon. What do you think he's doing in the huddle right now? Guaranteed, he's lobbying for the football. They'll try and run. This is Johnson. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Chicago. Carry on, Johnson with his second touchdown of the game, fourth of the year, as his guys are back within a single score. Third time's the charm on the extra point as he gets this one to go, and that will get him one closer. Now after the touchdown, here's Butker on to kick it away. This Carolina offense at the line, ready to go. Certainly want to avoid what they had to do last possession, that was punt the football, because this, this game's starting to tighten up. In a basketball sense, you think about taking a little bit of the air out of the ball, right? Maybe milk some clock, limit the possessions. In this case, they might want to do the same thing, but control the game offensively, put together some first downs, put together a drive, and keep it away from them. At the 28-yard line. Here's second and seven now from the 28. You gotta get the ball, D, get the ball. Now it's Smith running right. That one, a first down pickup of eight. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember the last drive, they went three and out. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Here we are, Check it out, Reese. Go. They'll run on first down with Cannon. And he'll take this one for about four up to the 40. They're trying to show that they can run the ball and protect this lead. Give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. Hey, 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 we got three down, three down. Check 13, check 13. He's coming, he's coming, he's coming. We got double up, double up. 
Looking to throw. Parks. Oh, he'll want that one back. Incomplete. He doesn't drop too many in that department. Third down. But he'll definitely say that that's one he should have held on to. But when you're playing in elements like this, sometimes those bullet passes, those ones with a little bit of pace on them, they can be difficult to hold on to. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. Off play action. Parks. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off around the 41. And the return out shy of midfield to the 46-yard line. Okay, partner. No surprise to you. I'm going to look at this from the defensive perspective. In the rain, you have to be more cautious trying to cover passing routes. Why? The offense knows where they're going with the football. The receiver knows the route he's going to run. You have to make sure you keep your footing underneath you. They begin the drive with Johnson. And the big boys up front, they're going to stop him right at the line. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. Back to throw now on second and ten. His throw incomplete. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely, just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. Big play coming up. Here's third and ten. I would expect to see some pressure here. drops off as they'll look to throw. And that's caught by Smith. And he's got this to the 30 before being taken down. How about 25 yards on third down? They'll take it. It's a gain of 25 yards. First down. And we're back now in Charlotte. It's Bears football, but they trail on the scoreboard as we get set to bring you the fourth quarter. This quarterback now perfect since the second half started. Seven of seven. It's first and ten. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Charles, this one not over, certainly, but you set the magic number earlier in this game at 20 points, said that they would need to hold them right around that marker under it. Uh, what, what are you seeing here? Well, that, that number is still in play because we said, okay, 20 or under gives them a chance to win right on pace for being in that range, and guess what? They've got a shot. Second down, it's Harris. And on this one, he'll get to the 15, right at the 15-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old-school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run, got behind his pads, bowled over a few people. Look at that one, right up the gut. Saw it through three quarters, no reason to lighten up now. They stay on the ground. This time it's Johnson. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of four on the first down play. I know when I was a kid, I always got real excited when I saw those lateral type runs. But the best backs that made it happen, they put a foot in the ground and just go. That didn't happen there. That play got swallowed up. Watch, take the creep. Take the creep. 
Check three, check three. On second down now, it's Harris. And good downhill running. He's got six yards down to the 13. This drive is turning to an extended one, and, and the guy carrying the ball, he's becoming more like a body blows guy. Every carry is putting some damage on the defense. So after a while, I'm not too sure how many guys are going to want to run up and tackle him. The Bears on third down. They've hit four of seven. This is third and nine. but it's Ross. And boy, he is very close to a first down, but from where they're spotting that football, he's going to be a foot or so short. So now then the penalty's got him set up with a first and goal. They'll try and run with Harris, and maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. This will be a two-yard loss on the play, and it'll be second and goal. They'll come out in the pistol. Back at the five-yard line now, second and goal. Johnson running right, and he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. It'll go as a loss of a yard, and it'll set up third down. Defensively, I think they can smell a stop ball right around the five here, brings up third. And I think what they've done is they put doubt in the minds of the offensive guys. What do we do? Because now you don't have a go-to play. Either side they pick, throwing it, running it, it won't be easy. Give him a couple on the run there, and now they're in that in-between area here on fourth and goal. Likely the play of the game here, trailing in the final quarter and going for it on fourth and goal. That's caught at the three. And he is in. Touchdown, Chicago. From four yards out, as his guys are an extra point away now from taking the lead here in the fourth. A very important extra point there, up and good. And they have taken the lead here in this fourth quarter. Now after the touchdown, here's Butker on. This is taken at his four. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. Now we're going to get a stoppage. It appears to be an injured bear on the field. While the training staff works on him, we'll step aside and be right back. The Panthers out there and ready to begin their next drive. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Just don't want to attack. We'll see how they attack them here. At the 31-yard line. Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. He's on the right, he's on the right, on the right. You got three, three down. Hey, team six, team six. Look at me, zipper. Get Back to throw. Parks. 
And this is going to wind up incomplete. The coverage there too strong on the deep ball, and now they face a third down. This defense is continuing to contest every deep ball that is thrown downfield. And look, it doesn't matter whether you're playing man or zone. Eventually, that becomes man on ready. man. And you've got to trust yourself and go up at that moment of truth and make a play on the football. Off the play fake. Parks. And unable to connect. Incomplete. Now give them credit, they took their shot, but it's going to bring up fourth down. Got to be wary of throwing an interception here because the defense knows they're going to get tested deep. That's why they're going to put a couple of extra guys back there to try and prevent that. Yeah, late in the fourth quarter here, trying to preserve the lead. On fourth down, Parks. He's got his tight end fan. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. So not only do they convert on fourth, but they pick up 22 yards in the process. Fourth quarter, two minutes on the clock in a tight one-point game. So it's Panther football as we welcome you back. They come up on a first and ten, desperately needing a score here on what could be their final drive. Oh, no, he lost the football. And this is picked up by the Bears. And his guys are going to get the football at their own 47-yard line. Well, that simply is a missed opportunity. They're in position. If they take the ball downfield and score, they've got a chance to win the game. Instead, they cough it up. I don't think next week at practice is going to be a whole lot of fun for him. On the other side, no bigger time to force a turnover when you've got that small lead. Yeah, and when you look at it from the, the offense's perspective, taking care of the ball is so important. I know they're going to have all kind of ball security drills in practice all next week. going to get this down near the 30-yard line. 13 yards, first down, Panthers. Well, they picked up a little bit of yardage there, and now, in this situation, should be in no hurry to run a play really fast. Let the clock wind down. Some good games going on in the early window. This might be the best of the bunch. A first down carry for Smith. Ramon Smith with his second touchdown of the game, fourth of the year. And the Panthers are going to jump back in front. Wow, I know it's a never-say-never never situation, but to me, that looks like that's the one that's going to finish them off. The score that puts them in front here late, but now you got to rally your kick team, don't you, and say the last thing we need is a big return. And what happens is guys get overeager, get out of their lane because they're so excited they want to make the last tackle. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. This is taken at the three. And he's all the way up across the 40 and down at the 42-yard line. Great return. And when you're facing a deficit on the scoreboard, you're just looking for something to get you right back into the game, and that's the spark that they were looking for. They got it with that big return. At the line, prepping for their next drive, the Bears offense. They're down here in a one-score game. But the time, it's a factor, but it's not a huge factor right now, is it? It's really not, because this amount of time gives them a chance to run their offense, to go through play sequences. And this is what they work on every week in practice, usually on a Friday. They go over this type of a situation, late-game situation. What are we going to do? When we have the opportunity, they've called these plays a bunch of times. Now's their chance to execute them. Well, they have the opportunity now. Here's the execution. And this time he's able to take it down to the 42. That one, a first down pickup of eight. I know they got a little yardage there, but I'm not sure their investment is right. They're still running the football, and I'm not sure there's enough time to continue to do that. They'll look to throw. And this is caught off a of deflection. A good convergence there defensively, only a yard, and it's second down. Now that's a defensive coordinator's nightmare right there. You're covering everyone, and the guy's not even the intended receiver ends up making the play. Right place, right time, I guess. When that ball's tipped up in the air like that, you've got to go up and get it. Offense and defense, and in this case, the offense ended up grabbing it. They only got a yard out of that last completion, and that makes this second and nine. Back to throw. 
Oh, he got position on him, and he pulls it in. That one good for 26 and a first down. Well, there's your leading receiver in the NFL in terms of yardage, putting on another clinic well over 100 yards. Are we taking notes? We should be, right? Because I'm going to go back and watch this tape and really enjoy what I'm seeing. The route running, competing for the football, just breaking down a defense. If they want a first, they need to get the football to the 32 here on third down. He's back to throw. That'll be incomplete as the clock will stop with 14 seconds remaining. Jalen Ramsey right there in coverage to knock it away. Down seven, and they've got to go for it here on fourth down. What we got? What we got? What we got? Mike, Mike, check, check. 59, 59. Watch the slam, watch the slam. Mike's good. Mike's 59. We got it. Yeah. 59, Mike, 59, Mike. Check, check, 59. Back to throw. He's got a man that's caught left sideline. Now a final chance to stop it here as a timeout comes in with 10 seconds left in the game. The drive continues as they search for a tying touchdown. Here's first and 10. Side here, and that's complete. And he takes this one in for a Bears touchdown. As his guys are in for six, as they can now even this game here in the fourth quarter with the extra point. And the clock will now stop as a timeout is called with five seconds left. Don't forget the extra point. It's up and good. And we may very well be headed to overtime. So here comes the kickoff now. All even here in this fourth quarter. This one taken from the seven. Final whistle blow. 60 minutes, just not enough some days to decide who's going to win the game. And here in overtime, if the team that receives the ball scores a touchdown, it's over. If they don't, we can still have some more football. That's exactly right. If they go down and kick a field goal, the other team gets a possession to either match it or score a touchdown to win the ball game. If both teams kick field goals, the next team to score wins. But if the receiving team throws a pick six or fumbles the ball and gets picked up by the defense and they score, the game is over at that point. So we're right back where we started. All even as the kicks away. This is fielded at the goal line. And his guys will get the football right at the 20-yard line. This Carolina offense at the line, ready to go. They control their own destiny here. They have the football in overtime. Obviously, a touchdown to win it. And I think teams around the league are still adjusting to the idea of going downfield, scoring a touchdown, wins the game because they were used to just going downfield and trying to get in field goal range to win a game. Still having to make that transition. Let's face it now, the ones who are doing it best know they need to go down, attack, put the ball in the end zone, and not leave it up to a field goal and give the other team a chance. Yeah, as we said, they control their own destiny now. Now a first throw here in overtime. Now they set up the screen, that's complete. And they'll blow that one up back at the 16-yard line. That'll wind up going for a loss of four. And that'll force upon him a third and 14. Let's go. Ten Lobo. Hey, Foxtrot, Foxtrot. Ringo, tight ends on Ringo. Tight ends on Ringo. We got four. We got four. 
Hey, exit. Smile. Operating from the gun. Parks. Oh, and it's intercepted. Picked off near the 42. And he'll bring this one back to the 29. A costly mistake here at OT. And you know what they say when you throw an interception like that in overtime? You don't usually get a chance to throw a second one. I mean, I'm not sure the analytics on it. Let's ask Marvin, our statistician, to, to ring that down for us. That's typically how coaches and teams feel about it. If you throw one, you likely cost yourself the game. The first down carry here for Johnson. And that play is blown up, losing yardage back at the 35. A full five-yard loss that time. It's going to make second down pretty tough. Second down. It's Harris. Space to run past the 20. And all the way down to the 17 yard line. 18 yards on that one, and Chicago has the first. A good run there off right tackle in an old school NFL football. The right side, the offensive line, often known as the nasty side. The left side, usually the technical side. Kind of reminds me of the old Atlanta Falcons 2009 2010. That's how they constructed their offensive line. And he's eaten up at the line of scrimmage. Might have gotten a yard down to the 16. And that carry probably not so much for yardage just to get the spot that you want to kick the field goal. And any yardage a game there is really kind of gravy. And this just becomes what my old coach used to say. Get into position to be in position. And that's what they want. The right spot for their kicker to line up the field goal. Two minutes left in this overtime session and still all time. Tenth carry for Johnson. And this play gets blown up. They'll lose yardage back at the 17. Officially, it will go as a one-yard loss, and that's going to lead to a third down. And it's third down. So the field goal unit is on the field, as this is a big spot right here. The Panthers are going to take another timeout. They'll be left with just one remaining here at OT. yardage here. Knocked back to the 19-yard line. Losing two yards that time and now it's fourth down. And he got it! The kick is good in overtime. He's able to split the uprights. Well, we thought this game would be a good one. It did not disappoint into overtime, and it took the field goal to win it. And we always pay lip service to how important it is to play defense. And usually we focus on the big offensive pyrotechnics, right? But in this case, they got the ball back on defense, gave themselves a chance, and they capitalized on it with a victory. And I don't care what distance that field goal's from in overtime. The knees are always knocking, <laughs> but he pushed it through. Not only that, think about your snapper, your holder. A lot of nerves for them, too, because they have to do their job in order to give him one last chance to put a foot to it. So for the Bears, their winning ways continue as they get it up to 7-0. And they'll get another road test next week as they have to go to Lambeau to take on the Packers. Meanwhile, for Carolina, the loss drops them back to 4-3 and three so far. And they'll try to get back to their winning ways next week as they head to Indianapolis to take on the Colts. And for Charles Davis and our entire crew here at EA Sports, I'm Brandon Gordon saying so long, everybody.